Hello, everyone. Uh, I want to start on time, and I never expected the room to be full like this. I see folks from all the major banks, uh, rating agencies, so very thankful. I am going to spend next 30 minutes telling about uh, how we have used LLMs to make sense of uh, generation of complex documents. That has been our topic. My name is Sandeep Kumar. I am based in New York. I work for a company called Synecron, where I run the financial innovation labs. So my full-time job is to uh, take care of these emerging technologies and apply it to a, a business use case. And that's what we end up creating a lot of business applications and technical tools, which our clients use. We are active in open source community. We started contributing uh, in cloud compliance or reg, open reg initiatives. We have built uh, tools, which we have put it on, under GitHub. And now we are looking at the AI working group and al also how we can contribute to the ISDA CDM track. These are the two topics under consideration. So I don't like to use much slides, so I will use some slides and also give you a demo in the end. So just to set the context, I think everybody, most of you belong to capital markets. Uh, we deal with a number of uh, entities in the corporate, uh, in, in capital markets. The main ones are, let's say, uh, banks on one side, investors on the other side, and in the center you have the corporate client for which you do a number of activities such as raising the capital, providing loans, and so on and so forth, trading, etc. Regulators are not to be forgotten in any of these uh, chains because they play a very important role. And this is kind of our world. We service this type of world in our business. So we looked at this about eight months ago. And we wanted to focus on a topic which is slightly complex, not uh, uh, like a, a chatbot or those kind of things. So we, we asked our subject matter people saying, which are the most complex areas in this business? And they said, uh, by volume, it is not the highest, but uh, doing the paperwork for IPOs is one of the most complex things that bankers engage in. A large bank like Citi or GS would do a few hundred IPOs in a year. Uh, and the other part which came, which uh, uh, they said credit memos. Credit memos are a very uh, popular instrument that are given to corporates, private or public, and they use it in a variety of ways. It, it has certain duration, so you need to put a lot of covenants, uh, conditions, and it becomes a very complex document. And uh, so in all this big world of uh, capital raising, we identified two topics uh, to work in the lab. And we spent about three months. And what I'm going to present is the result of those three, three months. And just to justify, we also look at volumes. We picked up this from SIFMA. So the IPO volumes is a little bit down these years, but the debt issuance is going on. Uh, Technically very similar things can be applied. What we have built is for uh, a form called S1. S1 is a form given by SEC. And this is what the corporates need to prepare with the help of bankers and legal and their staff when they want to go public. So it's, it's a uh, document a private company prepares. It can run into anywhere from 200 to 300 pages. It contains your entire book you know, uh, about the current and future prospects of the company, and this is what investors look at when you go public. And it's a legal document, meaning uh, you cannot just write anything which is not verified, supported by facts, and signed off by legal, and so on. So it's a very complex exercise. It takes uh, several weeks to get a first draft out. That's what bankers told us. And the second topic which I will describe is the credit memo which works in the corporate lending market. Uh, some statistics, it's seeing massive growth. Uh, whether companies go public or not, they need loans, whether they are public uh, or private companies. And globally, the growth rate is expected to be even higher. So these are the two things, uh, two topics we, we took up in the lab. And I just wanted to spend some time explaining these two things. These are both complex documents. A credit memo can also run into 40, 50 pages and involves a lot of data analysis, and then the uh, bank decides how much to give under what terms and conditions and so on. I will not say any questions because I'm not a uh, business expert on this topic, but let me know if anything uh, 
needs clarification on these two topics. So S1. So S1 is a document which has something like 23 to 25 sections. Each section can be uh, several pages, let's say about 10 pages each. So the document ends up being 250 pages. And you can see the parties that are involved, internal and external, which draft these sections. So the main party is the corporate, which is preparing its own document. Their uh, legal, their finance, HR folks will give data. It will go through internal, external counsel. The banks are advising. And then the whole thing gets ready. It takes anywhere from three to six months for a IPO documentation to be ready. Just to uh, cut, cut down, the whole thing takes several quarters. So what we set out to build is a company filing accelerator, which will take S1 as a first use case and then build it using LLMs. It should be able to do the following, which is to generate the draft of an S1. We, we never aspire to create a final version. The lawyers will kill us. So our goal was to generate a very good enough draft and then give it in the hands of the lawyers and the corporate folks to work further. But also, while doing so, uh, do the classical things such as data lineage, versioning, etc., which the current set of technologies are very bad at doing the LLMs. If you leave it to their game, you will not have any of these things. So we built these things on top of whatever data interfaces we built, whatever output was generated. Everything is versionized, kept. Uh, let's say a version one gets generated, give it to the user, user does some modification, all that is captured so that who knows and everything is supported by a document. So this is how we proceeded. Um, and just to give you a glimpse of some outputs I'm showing, on the left you see the sections. Each section will have several subsections. So for example, there's a section called risk factors. It is one of the most complex sections because the risk factors could come from macroeconomic risk, uh, your own company risk, technology risk, cyber risk, and so on and so forth. So why I'm showing this is, this is where the, we ran, uh, we did a lot of rag on this. So what we did is, suppose I have to generate uh, an S1 for a company A, and the company belongs to, let's say, TMT sector or healthcare sector. We took about 50 or 100 of earlier S1s which have been filed. It's a public documentation. That's, that's another reason we picked up this use case. And we did a complete modeling of those documents and put it through the LLMs to derive these topics. So where sections are given by SEC and subsections, we know from SEC, but the topics were derived using the RAG process. So you take 50, 100, whatever number of S1s you need to file uh, relevant for your, your se segment, and then derive the topic. So that is one of the good things about L LLMs. You don't have to hard code those top topics. You can start with a, uh, with a sample set from the past, and then it will give you the topic. And those topics become the basis for your prompt. So all the prompts that you will be sending to the LLMs now will be based upon these Thing, saying, tell me about the risks of the following types, because this is what the earlier 50 companies have described those type of risk. And then you add your own risk, anything specific or delete and so on. So we, we derived these topics, gave the user options to add delete into this, and then ran two types of experiments. So we are a lab, we do not get a lot of uh, private data, we do not have access to a lot of feeds, we get some partner feeds from companies like SNPs, etc and put it into this. So we ran two experiments. One was on private companies. Even a private company will have a lot of website, a lot of information out in the public. So use their public data and try and create an S1. That was the first experiment we ran. The second one was we took private companies, like our own company, and tried to uh, build up the mock-up the data and see how the S1 will look like. But what I'm going to show you is the results from the private companies and public data. So imagine any private company which has a website, LinkedIn page, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll come to the architecture in a minute. Uh, so let's say you've got some website. There is a CEO of the video or the marketing officer, a strategy officer talking about the company. And then uh, they have done some voluntary disclosures in the areas like what are their service offerings, what awards they have won, how they differentiate on uh, market presence, DEI, intellectual property, et cetera, et cetera, whatever they, they have spoken. So on any private company, you could get at least 20, 30 such sites, documents, et cetera. So we fed that 
And remember, there are, let's say, about 10,000 topics that are to be covered in this document. We, what we found was we were able to get at least 50% for a well-publicized company and create that draft first draft, and this draft was taking something like 30 or 45 minutes to run the rag on it, then do all the prompt engineering, feed data. So in, in less than an hour, I will not say half of the work is over, but half of the first draft was ready. And when we showed this to some of the friendly bankers, they said, yeah, this whole process takes about three weeks, even to tell our lawyers and our team and get the information from the corporate and even get the first draft out, which they are very keen to see because then they will go and uh, start refining it and pitching it. If, if you are doing it in 45 minutes, it's a very, very big saving for them. And then they go through this. And we also took different companies, like we ran this experiment for 10, 20 companies. There are companies which are less publicizing, less marketing happening about those companies. Even in that case, we could get one third of data points uh, from the public domain. So this formed the basis, and then we did some experiment with our own data, which I'm not allowed to show here, where the, uh, the percentage even became higher, 65 or 70 percent. So what we did, we applied this on our own data and gave it to our legal, our CFO to say, hey, how good is this draft? Can you rate the quality of this? So they did some tech, tech marks, some question mark, some things they dismissed, thinking this is hallucinations, we don't want all this. So we, we were able to reach about 65 or 70% of a good, en good enough draft. So this, is one ex this was a good uh, encouragement for us because it was a complex topic. It was not a topic like do a customer service based on certain rules or do something. Create a very complex document which would take uh, three weeks of time from expensive lawyers to generate the first draft. This is cutting down that first draft time, not the entire process time, by uh, at least half. And if you feed more data, I will show a demo quickly, uh, then you, you'll be able to uh, make it better and better. You can increase the percentages to beyond 70% as well. And assuming there are technical people in the room, I also wanted to show a high level technical diagram and so the way we designed was, we designed it in composable architecture. There are multiple layers. First layer is the microservices layer. Then we have the two layers dealing with data and data science part of it. And guess what? Whatever we do in the lab, let's say we get some compute from Microsoft or Google. We normally use OpenAI. That's easily available. Many banks use it. But we kept, kept it in a layer so that it can be changed. You could use OpenAI, uh, the client B could use Vertex, the client C could use AWS Bedrock type of a stack or anything else that comes up. And these things will keep coming up as you're seeing. The OpenAI guys have come up with O1 and so on. So, and then we kept a layer to fetch external data, uh, uh, connect to your financial, ERP, all the systems internally, which can give you precise data on finance, headcount, expansions, et cetera, et cetera. This, we have actually not built it. We have just written some routines to fetch it. Uh, Microsoft provides you ready-made hooks. Now, if you use the AI Studio, you get the ready-made hooks, which can give you data from these systems. So this is how the architecture looks like. And it took us about three months' time, a team of five, six people uh, who had earlier done AI applications. We deployed them, a couple of product owners, and we were able to build this. So. I will pause here for questions, comment, and then I will explain. I'll, I'll also want to show you a demo if everything works. So this is your chance to ask some questions or at least give me some feedback. Yeah, so it was built page by page, section by section, to be precise. So every section has a subsection, subsection has topics. Topics are results of the RAG. And we'll call the LLMs multiple times based on that information. and. I'm simplifying and saying we use OpenAI, but internally, based on the topic, we use different LLMs. So for example, you need to take an Excel sheet and write the commentary in English, like what is the result of this income statement? We used a different LLM to do this, which, which is very purpose-built for this. So for everything, we did not go to OpenAI LLM cloud, because a lot of banks demand, like this data cannot go outside. So we will use some on-prem LLMs like 
Flan T5, they can do a very good job of transcribing. Yeah, so the question is, did we find some public documents? Yes. So if you go to the SEC website, they have hundreds of S1s. It's a legal requirement. Not only S1, they have like 40, 50 doc document types, any amendments, uh, 8Ks, 10Ks. It's all filed and kept there. So that was one of the reasons why we picked up that use case. I just picked up Ingram Macro. I don't, like, I just to show that it's like hundreds of pages of, before I picked up this project, I used to say blah, 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 but now it all makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, so that is one of the trickier things. So many times a financial chart will come, which is not an Excel sheet or anything. It's, it's like a very graphically designed chart. So we are still working on those finer things. What we have been able to achieve, I'll show you in a demo. Like many times in credit memo example, you need to take a lot of financial data and create a nice looking chart. That we are able to do it. But the other part is not so straightforward. So, for example, if, if it's a very structured ex Excel with sub-columns, et cetera, we are able to do it. The images have a problem. We do not know wh what it says. Sometimes the X, Y axis is different or not clearly labeled. I can get back, like our team is researching with some uh, tools on, on that topic. Yeah, so let's say a typical, uh, S1 or any such documentation will, I'll, I'll just show you. It requires a lot of inputs on the left side. So I'm showing you a diff different flow, which is credit memo. Will require many types of documents, such as whatever company has filed for the last three years, quarterly, et cetera, et cetera. In the S1 case, uh, still it will, uh, like, even if you take a public company example, will scrape the entire website, Whatever speeches the CEO, CXOs have given, we took the videos and their transcripts into this. Whatever they have posted on LinkedIn, whatever awards they have won, all that information. So it comes from multiple sources. Yeah, but the, like these systems have no limitations. You can inject more and more documents. I will talk about limitations. So all these LLMs suffer from the context length constraints, saying I can do 4K, 8K, it reminds me of the Earlier RAM days, we used to work with 4K RAM, <laughs> 8K RAM, the people in the room who were around. But there are open source models coming which will solve this problem. I will uh, talk about that uh, in a minute. What are the RAM techniques you use for extracting from the So uh, we, we started with simple RAG techniques, now we use graph RAG. So uh, things like Lang chain will give you graph RAG. So we combine the goodness of graph, knowledge graphs, and the AI. Because the data mapping is not straightforward, you know. Every document is a different type. You need to resolve the named entities, et cetera, et cetera. So we use a knowledge graph based RAG. But most of our stack is very common or open source that you see. So that anybody can, our projects typically are now replicate this in my environment so that that has the least resistance if you if use common things here. Yeah, so it's a good point. So uh, we, we have built other applications which will take an existing document, let's say a, a earnings report or a set of earnings report and call transcripts, et cetera, and analyze the content. Or uh, throw a legal agreement and extract the obligations out of it. Yeah, yeah. Could you create a model that would give you that 65% number? Yeah, and so. Could it create a feedback loop for you? Yeah, no, no, good question. So, internally, we have created a, like an ideal S1 saying it should have per sector industry, it should have the following information filled in. And based on that, we do some, some mathematics behind it. But our feedback was mostly through our internal legal, who will analyze this for two, three days and come back with their reactions, or some of the friendly bankers. We work with some of the bankers who doesn't exist. But what we are building in this application, let me switch to the demo quickly. I'm showing you a version which is uh, uh, available and to be seen. Yeah, 
So we built a nice interface, so we didn't want to limit it to S1. People said, hey, if you can do S1, you can do amendments, and you can do all these uh, 8K, 10K reports in the future. That's more popular, etc. And then here you have all the sections, you know, from the forward to underwriting to legal memos, etc. And everything is tied together. So for example, if I come here and say, hey, I need to update revenue, like uh, a quarter has passed, some new revenue information has come, it'll come and tell me where all you need to go and look at. So you, you input a file, and then system will take over, it will go and show you the previous commentary, the new commentary generated, then you verify, approve, edit. So what we are building is a feedback loop on those screens, saying the, uh, the user can say up, down, but user can go and edit this or completely reject this and say regenerate or regenerate with. So some of the clients have asked saying, since this document has so many sections, how do you ensure that tone of the document is consistent and legal all throughout. So we found problems, like we were making so many calls with different LLMs, the tone, the output was having different tones. So we are working on those topics to fine tune the tone and make it standard. But we are giving those power buttons so that person can go and say, hey, uh, I need to update this, um, risk factor, et cetera, and change the tone, um, improve the tone, take this file, new information, rewrite this section now. So we are giving a lot of the classic application features into this. Yeah, on the feedback. So this was one topic uh, uh, that we dealt with. And with 10, 15 minutes remaining, I, I can switch to the second topic, which is actually proven to be more popular than the first one. Oof. This, this is an AI generated image, don't look at it. <laughs> I was telling AI one day saying, create a old looking car in a rural area, parked, trying to remember my childhood. It created a good job. So the credit memo, and credit memo as you said, it's used in the commercial banking area, and it's a far more voluminous thing, I mean in terms of volume, it is a shorter document. But many commercial banks are in this business. In fact, we got 5x more inquiries on credit memo, and those demos or projects have started on credit memo. But it has, we are using the similar engine in the, in the back. It has certain sections, this is some information. And it has to do a lot more analysis because you are making a decision. You are not just generating a prospectus. This time you have to make a decision based on this. So you look at the what is the purpose of borrowing? What is the business outlook? What is the industrial outlook? What are the ratings of this borrower? Let's say you are dealing with a public company, Caterpillar. Uh, what are the ratings by the top rating agencies like S&P, Moody's, et cetera? And what is the internal rating and then normalize those ratings? So it is a lot more involved process in, into doing this. But in the end, again, it, it follows the same structure. Uh, it has certain sections, subsections, and we are trying to do it, uh, uh, make a distinction between public and private companies, whether it's a new client for the bank or whether it's an existing client which is taking another facility from you. And we follow the same uh, structure. I will show you a quick. So here, let's say you are dealing with public companies. This is the example. You will go through their application document. The company will submit a few things. The company will have few things from their inception. You, you go through all that. You take all their quarterly and annual reports, any M&A, et cetera, that they have done, plus take a lot of income, tax statement, and all the financial uh, sheets into this, and then feed into the model. So here, we did not go the rag way. So because the feedback was, we don't want this new system to work like we have been working in the past. You know, let it generate a parallel set of credit memo, and we'll compare how good it is this, is it giving a different recommendation than our guys who have been doing it manually. So here we purposely dropped RAG or made it optional. You can run a RAG on exist, your existing credit memos or not run it. And then it generates a quick, let me show a quick demo. So 
So this was the nice charts, but the output side. So uh, first, like any system, you define all the sources, your files, website, from where information to be picked up. We are building some API hooks into it. And then this is a generated output. I think we have taken advanced micro devices, uh, some public company. And it will fetch all the public information it could find from the company or whatever came through a loan management system, uh, give complete details and a, a view into their cash flow and various type of income statement analysis, et cetera. Uh, then perform risk assessment based on every bank will follow a certain method. We have just used a common method to get the, and this is where we have added credit rating agencies. Uh, evaluate all the collateral that uh, the firm is supplying and the repayment analysis and all of those things. What is their DSO for the past three years, et cetera. You look at all those things. So the purpose of taking this use case was it's one of the more complex, more convoluted process. Let's see how far LLMs can take us, you know, and how, how good the output is. So this is how we test it. We have tested internally, which are like business analysts and subject matter folks, but we then give it to our clients and friendly clients who will then compare as a first draft how good this is. So they give us the name of four or five companies that they are currently working on. We produce the output and we give it to them. And then they give us feedback saying, yeah, this section was good, this section was, doesn't make sense, or some things they like, like the, all this financial information in one place, they love it because many banks don't have it. And then it can do all, all of these analysis. And finally, it, uh, not, not this, yeah, it makes a recommendation. So finally it says, yeah, give the loan or do not give the loan. It gives the reasoning behind it. And then we made a surface graph saying, looking at the various parameters of how you decide, and these are configurable parameters to, in, in terms of importance, this is what the data and the models are saying, saying in terms of executive summary, it's neutral, a few things are green in terms of risk, et cetera, but some of the things like repayment is actually uh, modeled as a negative, so go and take a look and then go and generate all this. So technically what we achieved in this is take a lot of internal external data sources, generate this, and then expose the prompts. So what we also did was every bank deals with, will deal with risk in, it, in its own ways. So in, in this case, we have exposed all the prompts. And you can go add, modify, delete your prompts, et cetera. And, uh, with some of the newer tools, it can become even better in terms of if, if you apply agentic AI, it can take output from one step and feed it into the second step and all, all that can be done. And finally, it generates that f famous PDF, which runs into 40, 50 pages, which has all the data into one place. And this is very well received by commercial banking uh, CIOs. They really love it. Many banks are, I think, uh, working on it. So that was one of the reasons of presenting this in Finos, because Finos, we get exposure to all the banks. And my uh, goal is not getting the business, but getting your feedback. If you're interested in the topic, if you're willing to be a reviewer of this, any of these documents or any of these type of document, now the engine can work on uh, not just S1, but other type of filing. It can generate, uh, let's say, quarterly earning, earning reports, et cetera. So that is the reason of uh, presenting this here. And I also want to summarize, I have 10 minutes maybe. So I have a slide on challenges, but before that I wanted to highlight the good things that LLMs have done. <laughs> One is, it cuts down the time in generating the first, first cut. That is a common feedback we heard saying, yeah, yeah, our lawyers take three weeks. Some, some said, yeah, it goes for a month and comes back. So many a big team is working just to get the first draft out and the senior guys are waiting on this. So it can, now it's like running into 30, 40 minutes. We are able to generate one and, and give it. Being an application, 
It can do all the cross-validation of data. It can maintain the entire revision lineage because we are putting every step output in, in a database and then comparing when whatever comes next. If a user has modified something, why have you modified this? What is the supporting documentation? So that when a CFO reviews this, he or she sees the entire lineage. And then our best feedback came in the qualitative part of the world. So it's able to generate financial commentary. It can write about the company in a prospectus. Because many times the management is doing a lot of draft how to write good things about the company. It gives you another perspective. So that was very, many subject, subjective clauses such as risk factors is a very complicated exercise for a corporate. You have 10 or 15 type of risk factors. You need to take into account macro, industry, and their own risks. Then apply certain permanent risks like cyber, et cetera, onto it and write in the context. It does a very fine job. If you can say, hey, my company has suffered three type of breaches. We do this kind of uh, services. We also handle that kind of data. It will tell you, start writing as if it's like a mid-level lawyer, you know? So that, that was very good. We were able to run industry-specific RAG. That was very, very good, saying uh, to generate prospectus for healthcare companies. So it will spit out things like drug trials and all that information has to be, it will like create blank sections saying no data found on drug discovery pipeline and things like this. So that, that way it's very, very helpful. But at the same time, being a tech shop, we found many, many errors. My friend Ananta is somewhere, you can speak more about this. So the context length is the major, major uh, bottleneck. And that's where open source tools are very helpful. LXP is awarded. Performance limitations, I can fire uh, like 10,000, 1,000 data points, 10 queries each. And it's running such a massive bill for us. And it takes uh, 45 minutes to generate. And people are saying, come on. All other things you guys did in blockchain and AI days, it was like a click of button. What is going on 35 minutes? Executives do not understand this uh, performance limitation. And then uh, complex documents cannot be fed. Imagine I want to feed 100 S1s, which have been filed before, and then say generate the company uh, S1. It takes so much of chunking, lang chain, vector databases. So context length is a big problem. Tonality is a big problem. We are trying to curate that. And all other things, explainability, why this was given, like in credit memo, why was this decision made? So we are giving a lot of what if tools into this. So in the lab, we are focused on four topics, AI guardrails, knowledge graph and AI. We are building many applications which show you the power of, let's say, an inference engine. If you change five, seven different variables, what is the impact on a market or, or a credit card world, et cetera. Agentic AI is the flavor of the quarter. So what they are doing is <laughs> applying BPM and AI tools together. It is nothing great, but it has come a little bit late. So, but what it allows you to do LLM routing, meaning you don't have to use an expensive LLM all the time for thousands of your call. You could use uh, cheaper LLMs, on-prem LLMs, and you can do all the routing. And the biggest thing that I found personally was MemGPT. MemGPT is an open source tool, which everybody should look at. It, it is trying to create a GPT OS. So just like in an OS, you have different types of memory, from RAM to all the way to the storage and in between server and client and all those things. It's trying to replicate that kind of OS scenario in handling your context. So we are trying this in about three months' time. We'll be able to show results of, of this. This will dramatically change all the intermediate steps that you need to do. And in all this chunking of documents and feeding and coming back, you lose the context, you lose the tone, and so many problems happen. I think this will solve the capital market problems in a very, very big way, if MemGPT. It's, it's backed by one of the um, original authors of the paper, which uh, Attention is all you need. One of those people are involved, so it is quite credible. And that's the reason we are paying a lot of attention to this. So this is what I wanted to communicate. Many thank you for coming. Uh, we have five minutes time. My our next speaker is, I think, waiting over there. I will ask him to come and do a setup. But 
we can spend some Q&A. Sorry.